Hi, my name is Chad Carnes with MCA Connect, and you're watching another episode of Five Good Minutes in Microsoft Dynamics AX. And this week is the greatest sporting week of the year. Uh, we have the end of the Final Four in the NCAA Basketball Championships. We have the uh, start of the NBA playoffs, the beginning of Major League Baseball, but most importantly, and above all else, we have the Masters. And in this household, we only, we only, uh, we only, uh, we were fans for only one player, and that is the good old Jordan Spieth, who hails from Texas. So we wish him the very best. But what makes um, all athletes great, okay, is their commitment and their ability to adapt and their ability to change. A lot like Mr. Spieth, okay. And today, that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to kind of talk about the um, uh, kind of this transition from SSRS reports, okay, in AX in previous versions of AX to. Power BI and how um, we want to create more of an interactive uh, set of data, okay? I'm also gonna show you how to use your Xbox One controller. I promised I'd do that on the last episode, but again, um, really what we're gonna look at today is we're gonna look at something called aggregate data entities, okay? And I'm gonna kind of give you just um, kind of the basics, okay? We're gonna look at aggregate measures, aggregate dimensions, and how those can become aggregate data entities, and then how we surface those through Power BI. And basically, this is how you would surface Power BI into AX7. And again, I'm just gonna to try to give you a baseline and we're gonna to try to do all that in just five good minutes. So I'm gonna show you how to use the Xbox setup here. And you're gonna download the Joy of the Key file that I'm gonna leave out there for you. You're gonna open up the file, you're gonna run the executable, and then you got the setup buttons and I've got my screenshot of my configuration, okay? Additionally here, um, this is the hardware that, I'm, that, I, that I use. I use a wireless display in my Surface Pro 4. Okay, so you're gonna open up the executable, okay? And then you can configure it from there, okay? Um, I'll let you guys kind of walk through that piece, but it's real easy to configure, but again, you can use the configuration that I use and I'm going to leave it out there and save it out there in a folder. All right. So today let's get on to aggregate data entities and power BI. Okay. We're going to talk, we're going to use customer invoice transactions. So we always got to start from the functional. Okay. So I'm going to take you in here and we're going to go look at, and again, we're just looking at sales order invoices. Okay. Against lines. So you have to understand when you say, Hey, we're going to do sales reporting. You're not doing sales reporting. You're doing uh, sales against uh, uh, you're going invoices against sales orders. Okay. So I went all the way down here to the sales order. I click the invoice. I go in the invoice journal and we're going to be looking at the cust invoice trans or the invoice lines against sales orders. Okay. So that is the basis. All right. So the first thing that you have to understand is aggregate measures. Okay. Aggregate measures. And it's just what it sounds like. We aggregate measures. All right. So if you, I'm going to go in here, I go into visual studio and I've already created a project and a solution. Okay. But I'm going to create a new aggregate measure. Okay. And, uh, and basically what we're gonna do is we're, the, the basis for this is a query that I've already created, okay? So I created a query that, um, that, and I'll show you the query here. I created a query that just took the cust invoice trans, okay? Which is the lines you saw on the functional side and it connected it to the cust invoice journal, which is the header of the invoice that you saw just a minute ago uh, in, our, in our screenshots of where that is functionally. So I always start functionally and work my way back technically, okay? All right, so you can see the query that I created, okay? You can see the fields that I exposed. I then turn that query into a view, okay? And that's the view, that's the source of data that we're using. And you can see I just put the view on my aggregate measure. So it says, hey, here are the fields that are valid inside of my view, okay? And now the first thing here is I'm gonna add some attributes, all right? So I'm gonna add the invoice ID, okay? Um, Basically, when you do this, uh, you just uh, you just create a new record, you add the invoice ID, and it pulls from it pulls from those fields. Okay, so here I'm going to show you how now you can add measures. Okay, uh, what I want to do in this is show you how to add one from each section. Okay, and then I kind of skipped over the video because I only have five good minutes to do this. All right, uh, and basically here I said quantity. So again, always it always goes back to measures and attributes. Okay. So I, as you can see here, I'm adding in the um, line amounts. So you got to be careful with the amounts as well because you have you have amounts uh, amounts that are in the reporting currency, and you have amounts that are not in the reporting currency. Okay, so this is kind of the new thing. Aggregate dimensions are cool because I can now bolt on stuff to my original query. Okay, so basically date and company ID are already in here, but I'm going to add customer. Okay, so instead of creating a query that also brings in the cust trans table, and then I got to bring the direct party table, and I got to do a bunch of stuff to get the name of the customer and stuff, I can now take these pre-built aggregate dimensions, which is which was just what it sounds like, aggregate dimensions, you know, aggregate, we could call it aggregate attributes, okay? And we can bolt those on to our aggregate measures, okay? And basically use those in our aggregate data entities later on, okay? This is a little bit confusing. It was a little bit confusing for me when I first started doing this about, you know, how this works, okay? But once you kind of understand the concepts, it, it works pretty good. So I wanted to kind of take you here and I'm gonna show you the aggregate um, dimension customer, okay? And basically, if you think about it, it's just kind of the master customer information put into another view that I can bolt onto my aggregate measure, okay? 
I know that's kind of confusing, but again, I just want to try to give you the basics today of kind of, kind of how the pieces work together, okay? All right, so now uh, we'll come back in here, and I basically uh, did some legwork. I put in a few more attributes from the view, okay? And now we've done the query, we've done the view, we've done the aggregate measure, we bolted on our aggregate dimensions, and this is where aggregate data entities come in. Okay, this is the game changer, all right? This is, this is, the, this is kind of where the, where the rubber meets the road, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new aggregate data entity, okay? And, uh, and basically it's going to expose the data in my aggregate measure, okay? Um, basically I have to surface this and say it's public and then I give it a name. This is important because I'm gonna come back to this later when we wanna expose this in Power BI, okay? So please, please remember, uh, you know, kind of that name, this section, okay? Um, uh, again, um, I'm going to go ahead and put a key in here, and I'll explain what the key is in just a second. All right, so I called it customer invoice uh, here. So, so, so again, remember that key and remember that. Okay, so if I come in here now, okay, I'm going to pick my measure. So now I'm going to go link myself on my data source, just like I would a view or you know somewhere else. I'm going to link myself to um, that measure that I set up. Okay. And now, uh, now that I've done that, I'm now gonna bring fields in and it's just like building another view. That's all it's like, it's just like building another view. Except in this view, we bring in fields and then we choose what we wanna aggregate by. So I can drag those in, okay, I'm gonna drag those in. So I drag my attributes in, drag my measures in, okay. And now the dimensions work a little differently. I have kind of the ability to pick and choose what I want here, okay. So I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna say, give me my, um, my uh, customer invoice measure. I'm gonna say, pick my customer aggregate dimensions. Okay, but now if you look, I've got additional fields in here. So I'm gonna pick the customer name because that's the field I wanna expose. And again, it's got a relationship to the customer ID or the, or the, or the customer record in my uh, cust invoice trans view that I built, okay? I know this is a little confusing, but again, I wanna just kind of give you guys the basics. I wanna give you guys kind of just the 101 of kind of how to expose this data, okay? And how to kind of build what you wanna build. Uh, again, now I just start duplicating them, and all I'm doing now is changing it, changing the name of the field in the aggregate dimension. So instead of uh, instead of customer group and or instead of customer name, I'm picking customer group. Okay, I also brought in the product information. I really like the customer one. I like the release products one because it gives you all the information on an item. Okay, again, it keeps you from having to bolt all these in 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 your original query. Okay, so. So as I do that, um, as I do that, I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to kind of finish this out with the rest of the, the you know, I'm pulling in the dates. Okay. And that's the other thing. The date aggregate dimension lets you pull in like month and year. I mean, you can pull different types of dates and it works a lot like the, the, the BI stack did in 2012. Okay. All right. So now here's the key. I put the key in. Okay. I put the key in because I said I wanted to, I wanted to aggregate by my key. Okay. Basically now I'm bringing in the key fields in which I want to aggregate by. So, so basically this allows me to take like, say something like the inventory table. Basically I can, I can shrink it down to just, uh, to just aggregate by the records I choose. Okay. I compiled it. I synced it with the database. Okay. So now that we have our data source, let's go over to Power BI. Okay. And we're going to expose this data in Power BI. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to copy your link. Okay. Copy the link to your environment. Okay. Um, and, and then basically on the end of it, you're going to put backslash and then you put data. Okay, and we're gonna basically connect to this with an OData feed, okay? So by syncing it and by doing, and by saying, and, and if you remember, I, if we said, is it visible? Yes, and then we put our name in, okay? That's where that comes to play here, okay? So you wanna make sure you put something in there that's recognizable to a user, okay? So I'm gonna open this up. I put in my, I put in my, my link slash data. It gives me this list. These are all the data entities that are exposed. And you'll see, since I said, yes, you're visible, I can now, I now can expose my data entity in AX. Okay. So the thing I want you to know is if you have a lot of records in here, this will take some time to upload, to update. Okay. So, um, you know, uh, the megs per second doesn't run that fast here. Okay. So, so I just want to point out that it might take five or six minutes to get, you know, say 150, 200,000 rows. That's where you want to look at tools like things like scheduling your power BI. Okay. So now that we've got it right, let's, you know, I didn't do a very good job in this part because I ran out of time, but now let's just build something. I mean, once you have it, this is where you can kind of turn it over to people, people who use the data every day. And we can build, you know, basically you can, you know, you can kind of control this by saying, I'm controlling what's, I'm controlling what data you can expose, but then you're giving people the power to build what they want. Okay. So there's gotta be a balance. There's gotta be a control, but I think we're doing that pretty effectively here. Okay. Now, again, I can create other data entities. I can link them together. Okay. And I can make this much more dynamic in a model. Okay. But again, this one, I just wanted to expose just kind of one view, one set of data, but just imagine if you had sales orders and packing slips and, and, and a customer master table, and you're kind of linking all those together with another date table. I mean, you can make this pretty, pretty extensive and pretty replicable between clients.
Okay, and I think I think the last thing I did here is I just added a slicer. Okay, I just wanted to kind of show you guys. I mean, again, this is this is what the super users would do. This is what the functional team would do. But again, um, I think you guys get the idea behind um, what's possible with this new set of aggregate data entities. Okay, and again, we did this all in just a few minutes. All right, but again, you can make these much more complex models, and you can choose to link them um, in your uh, in your Power BI desktop to create more dynamic places um, to expose and show data. Okay, so I came in here and I just, I added a slicer. Uh, we're slicing by customer group, we're slicing by legal entity. So basically I'm looking at my, my sales order invoices by, by, um, by customer and by customer group and by legal entity, okay? Hopefully this just gives you an overview. Hopefully this gives you a taste of kind of what's possible in the future. And hopefully you'll join us next time on Five Good Minutes in Microsoft Dynamics AX.